I grew up in Guam and my dad was an artist. That wasn't his profession, he was an engineer and I had a teacher who would try and teach art because she had to teach everything and she would always have me like go onto the whiteboard and show kids how to draw because she knew I could draw better than her so that was was pretty awesome. I had this idea of what the States was gonna be like. It was a lot of what I saw on TV, and so I was super excited when I found out we were gonna move to the States. I was 13 at the time, and I just remember flying into Walla Walla, Washington. I was like, oh my God, where are we? What did my dad do to us? And had this like huge culture shock and went to a school of only like 200 kids and I was the only one that looked like me there. All throughout school and high school, I was like, okay, I need to be a teacher or I need to do something that is going to provide income for me in the future. It was really good for me to be pulled aside by my brother and my friends and be like, okay, go somewhere that isn't Walla Walla first of all and try and start a new life and so I moved here and I was actually living in Fairhaven when I first moved here like I would walk to the boardwalk and I would bring a sketch pad or I'd go to the cafe and just draw and admire all the artwork on the walls and I would think to myself oh I want to do that that'd be awesome and just became really involved with all the other artists in the community and had to like get out of the shy introverted Sierra because I was becoming my most vulnerable self that I was too afraid to like show and to express and I think I can say that because I see it in other artists who are like I want to do this it's like well just just do it <laughs> you know in a lot of my illustrations one of the first things that people recognize are the little dots on the cheeks that I draw my women and that was to embrace a part of me that I was really embarrassed of and ashamed of which is suffering the psoriasis and so the dots on the cheeks were something that I did for myself, but people started noticing it and started asking questions. And so it was a way for me to talk about my insecurities and to get it out there without making it feel so taboo. And the best part was girls who suffered with insecurities or people who suffered with psoriasis were like, oh my God, thank you. Like, thank you for doing that. And so I started doing portraits of women in my family. And it was a way to honor them and to honor their strength and their character. And not a lot of women of color were portrayed in that light. And so I just started adopting that and using it to kind of highlight all kinds of women and to help encourage them and whatever you look like, whatever size you are, color you are, you're you're a saint. <laughs> so I like to create things that I enjoy, which is why I do a lot of um, silly animal art as well. My tagline that I have everywhere on social media and on my products is art is my passion and I want to share it with the world. And that's why I make my art very affordable and accessible. That's why I have buttons and it's why I have cards and prints because I, I like to give people the option and I just want people to have art in their lives and to hear people like, oh, this is so so-and-so, you know, it makes me happy. I just appreciate Bellingham and the community that supports art because I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for Bellingham. Um, not to like say anything bad about other places I've lived, but I did encounter moments where I would ask to put my art up in places and people would tell me that it's not what they're looking for. And I don't think I've ever felt that in Bellingham, or I know I've never felt that in Bellingham. I've always felt like welcomed, you know, and like I felt like I was wanted here, or like I had a place here. So thank you, Bellingham. <laughs>